morning boys and girls and welcome to yet another session of Sunday School. Today we are going to do um, a class on one of the prophets which uh, we've been hearing quite a bit. We, we hear a lot about him from our uh, in, in the readings that we hear in church. We hear a lot about him as per the promises that he gave, the prophetic messages that he gave. Uh, which are which we are still living with today but before I let you know who the actual prophet is I would like to do a little recap of the previous five sessions that we've already had and for this I have asked a few of your friends to help me do the recap so let us just sit back and listen to the recap of the five sessions which are done by your very own friends so sit back and hear them out Looking back at the sessions covered on the prophets Elijah and Elisha, I've learned a prophet is God's messenger, or let's put it, God's mouthpiece. Both Elijah and Elisha had a zeal to carry out God's word. God provides in unimaginable ways. God's power moves us to bless others. I'm here to tell you about my learning from prophet Elijah. Prophet Elijah teaches us obedience, fearlessness and perseverance. We come to know of this because even though he came from a very unwealthy background, when God told him to meet King Ahab, he did it, even though he was scared. This is a true sign of obedience to God. Secondly, he teaches us to trust God with all our problems because when God has our problems, he will always make it right. Just like God provided Prophet Elijah with enough food and water at the brook, He will provide us with all our needs at His time. We just have to be patient and trust and pray to God. Thank you. Takeaways from the Sunday school class were one that we should always tell God all of our troubles and it will not bother Him and He will be happy to help us. Like in the Milton story example and number two, we should always do whatever God tells us to do like the king in prophet Elisha's story and our problems will go away. From this session four, I learned about prophet Amos. I learned that we all are the children of God and we all deserve equality. No one deserves to be discriminated on the basis of rich and poor. I also learned that if our instinct tells us that something wrong is happening around us, someone has been treated in the wrong way, we should take a stand for it and do what is right. So in the first session, we learned about Hosea, who is the prophet of divine love. His life teaches us that we must be faithful to God. The two key takings from the session are that God is pleased with the human heart and human action which reflect his covenant rather than the external sacrifices which are meaningless. And the second taking is that when our parents, teachers or elders yell at us, we must not take it as a bad impression. Rather, it's a good sign because God loves us and he cares for us and he wishes the best for us. Thank you so much for the ones who responded uh, to my message of helping me recap the class. Uh, truly appreciate your time in giving your uh, videos and giving your clippings for this and helping all of us get a recap of the previous five classes that we've already had. Um, now coming to the class of today, we are going to be learning about a major prophet, Prophet Isaiah. Prophet Isaiah has been um, a prophet with tremendous, I would say, um, with the messages, the prophetic messages that he has given has, and the things that he has foretold are things that we still live in today. We still live in the times of the prophetic messages that he has actually, um, he had actually spoken um, 770 BC or 7, I would say 740 BC. Um, he was the prophet who actually foretold the birth of Christ 
and um, he's he's one of those prophets who has been majorly uh, referred to and his name has come up a couple of times even in the new testament so you can see the importance of prophet isaiah uh, a very important prophet uh, he he is the twenty third book in the Bible. If you have to actually go and open your Bibles, which I would want you to at the time when we are going to be having the Word of God phase, his messages. The first part of his of the book uh, compiles messages or prophetic messages which are terrifying, which are warnings, which are things that we have to do, uh, which are things that will come in terms of the warnings of. We, we have to be prepared to prepare our souls for that. The second part is the more comforting uh, messages, the more comforting news that, that God has given us through Prophet Isaiah. Now, a little bit about Prophet Isaiah. He was born around 770 BC and roughly around 740 BC is when he got the call to be a prophet. He got the call to actually come and serve God. Um, in a very different manner, he got the call, uh, which I will show you in a video in some time from now. He was reluctant to answer God's call. In the in you know he was uh, he his first question was, "Is it me? Do you think because I am not the one who can speak that boldly? So how are you going to make me a prophet? How are you going to make me?" Or somebody who's going to speak out your words. A very similar pattern of how we deal in our lives. You know, we are we're also doubtful about our own capabilities. We are always doubtful about uh, how we would respond to God's call if we are called to be his prophet. Prophet Isaiah shows God as a comforter, shows God as a creator, shows God as the Lord who has the power over all of us. So that's how Prophet Isaiah's messages have pictured God, Yahweh, the Almighty for us. Prophet Isaiah came from a very noble family, a good, well-to-do family, not from, not, not, not a family that was not capable of meeting, uh, making ends meet. But in spite of that, he was so not confident of himself being called to be a prophet for God. And um, that's where all of us today have a dilemma in our minds also. And that's what I think we should, by the end of this class, be able to reflect on. How am I to be called a prophet? And how do I respond to that call of being called by God? to um, serve in a small way, in a big way, in, in different ways that we, each of us are called to serve. So, now that I mentioned to you earlier, I'm going to show you a clipping of the vision that Prophet Isaiah got when he was called to be a prophet of Christ, be a prophet of God. And I would want you to um, listen to the way he responds. I want you to observe the way Prophet Isaiah actually responds to this, uh, to his call. So I would like you to watch this for now and we come back and discuss it. King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, with two he flew. One called to another and said, Holy, 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 holy is Yahweh of armies. The whole earth is full of his glory. The 
foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, Yahweh of armies, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs from off the altar. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin forgiven. I heard the Lord's voice saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. So we see in this video the call of Prophet Isaiah call of Isaiah to be a prophet of God. The background of the situation where he was in, the place where he lived, was um, in Judah, with the Jews in Judah. And here is a place where the ruler was somebody who controlled everything. The ruler controlled their capacity of uh, defeating the enemies. The ruler controlled the capacity of them uh, uh, with regards to the faith that they had, uh, with regards to the religion that they practiced, with regards to the, to, the, to the God that they worshipped. With this situation, the people of Judah were not completely surrendered to Yahweh. They were, they were people who believed in idolatry, idol worshippers. Uh, their uh, whole dependence was on their ruler and king. Uh, their king was not somebody who was also dependent on Yahweh. He had a lot of other uh, places of worship that he used to go to. So that's where, um, this is the background of where uh, Isaiah became a prophet. Now, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all this turmoil, all these kind of uh, things, uh, you know, that were not suited, Isaiah was called to be a prophet. Now, I want you to pause for the situation, come back to our situation. We are also called to be prophets in a very, very similar situation that we currently live in. We see so many idol, idol worshippers. Worshippers of idolatry. Our rulers are not rulers who, who, who perform the same, who believe in the same faith that we have. And um, the situation that we are in today uh, calls for a lot of more faithful prophets to be uh, channels of uh, God's message to people around us. In this situation that we are in is a very similar resemblance to what Prophet Isaiah was. And now you see his reluctance to be a prophet was also because of the way things were. And the way the situation we are in today was very similar. So it's very easy to understand what was the background at that point of time when Prophet Isaiah was actually living. Okay, now that I've given you this, um, this clarification and explanation of where his situation is, very similar to the situation that we actually live in today. Now, coming to the next part of it, the kingdom where they lived was under attack, was going to be under attack. And this was the time when Prophet Isaiah went to the king and told him that we need to not attack the enemy, but God will save us from the enemy. He was shocked. He said, how can that be possible? He said, no, God has promised and God has sent me a message to, and told me that he will protect the kingdom 
without us even attacking or physically going for a for a or for a war physical war or a fight he wasn't sure because he was not completely a believer of yavi and uh, the enemy surrounded them the enemy surrounded their entire territory and uh, they waited there was one thing that they did was they listened to the message that yavi gave uh, isaiah gave them prophet isaiah gave and this king waited on the lord he waited on yavi to fulfill his promise though it was very unrealistic simply because their kingdom was not that strong like i said they were a weak uh, kingdom as compared to the enemies that were attacking them so they weren't even sure whether they should be going in for a war but they had to defend themselves and hence they had to show the enemies that they were ready for war but they were not to attack and they were to only sit in to cover up the space though they were surrounded by a stronger level a stronger enemy they were still surrounded by a stronger uh, kingdom uh, with stronger enemies and stronger ammunition and all of those things and that's where the situation is where they remained faithful to god they had the patience to wait upon the lord they had the patience to wait to see his his promise being fulfilled in their kingdom in their lives i'm pausing this phase i'm coming to our lives very similar isn't it a situation where we do not always believe in god a situation where we do not always entrust ourselves to god we may or may not be faithful to him at all times but we are called to be faithful but it's a it's a it's a very testing time for us to be faithful to god every time and this is a situation that we face we are all of us are in today in this whole pandemic situation if you have to say we don't know what the future is we don't know whether you're going to have your ssc exams rightly so in the month of march we don't know how the ninth standards are going to have their exams and prepare for their 10th standard and how it's going to be with with the college students and how it's going to be post that nobody knows we don't know how 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 it's going to how it's going to pan out uh, like like for us when when we when we were planning sunday school we have no idea till how long we are going to be planning until october until december until january so the situation is so unsure but what we do is we only need to wait upon the lord we need to entrust and put our faith in him and say that okay you are in control of our lives and we want you to take charge of what needs to go by i'm going to pause the situation here now for you we're going back to isaiah we're going back to prophet isaiah and the times there now that we have figured that they were in a midst of a crisis situation they are in the midst of a crisis where they are surrounded by enemies all around them and they've not gone into war they have been told not to go into war and they have heard and uh, heard and listened to the word listened to the promise and they have stayed where they are and not gone ahead we are now going to go into um, seeing another video which shows us on the book of isaiah chapter 1 to 39 which covers the major part of how prophet isaiah uh manifested the promise of yahweh in uh, the kingdom where he was living in the place where he was living and and it also shows like i mentioned earlier the idolatry worshipers the idol worshipers and how prophet isaiah played a role of being a messenger of christ so i want you to now um, pay attention to this video and we will then come back and discuss it the book of the prophet isaiah isaiah lived in jerusalem in the latter half of israel's kingdom period and he spoke on god's behalf to the leaders of jerusalem and judah 
He spoke, first of all, a message of God's judgment. He warned Israel's corrupt leaders that their rebellion against their covenant with God would come at a cost, that God was going to use the great empires of Assyria and after them Babylon to judge Jerusalem if they persisted in idolatry and oppression of the poor. But that announcement was combined with a message of hope. Isaiah believed deeply that God would one day fulfill all of his covenant promises, that he would send a king from David's line to establish God's kingdom, remember 2 Samuel 7, that he would lead Israel in obedience to all of the laws of the covenant made at Mount Sinai, remember Exodus chapter 19. And all of this was so that God's blessing and salvation would flow outward to all of the nations, like God promised to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. And it's this hope that compelled Isaiah to speak out against the corruption and idolatry of Israel in his day. Now, the book has a pretty complex literary design, but there's one simple way to see how it all fits together. Chapters 1 through 39 contain three large sections that develop Isaiah's warning of judgment on Israel. And it all culminates in an event pointed to at the end of chapter 39, the fall of Jerusalem and the exile of the people to Babylon. But in chapters 1 to 39, there's also a message of hope that after the exile, God's covenant promises would all be fulfilled. And chapters 40 to 66 pick up that promise of hope and develops it further. In this video, we're just going to focus on chapters 1 to 39. The first main section focuses on Isaiah's vision of judgment and hope for Jerusalem, and it begins as Isaiah accuses the city's leaders of covenant rebellion, idolatry, injustice, and God says he's going to judge the city by sending the nations to conquer Israel. Isaiah says that this will be like a purifying fire that burns away all that's worthless in Israel in order to create a new Jerusalem that's populated by a remnant that has repented and turned back to God, and Isaiah says that that's when God's kingdom kingdom will come and all nations will come to the temple in Jerusalem and learn of God's justice, bringing about an age of universal peace and harmony. Now, it's this basic storyline of the old Jerusalem purifying judgment into the new Jerusalem. This is going to get repeated over and over throughout the book, getting filled in with increasing detail. So, at the center of this section is Isaiah's grand vision of God sitting on his throne in the temple. And he's surrounded by these heavenly creatures that are shouting that God is holy, holy, holy. And Isaiah suddenly realizes just how corrupt he and his people Israel are. And he's certain that he's going to be destroyed by God's holiness, but he's not. God's holiness, in the form of this burning coal, comes and burns him, but not to destroy. Rather, it purifies him from his sin. And as Isaiah ponders the strange experience, God commissions him with a very difficult task. He is to keep announcing this coming judgment, but because Israel has reached a point of no return, his warnings are going to have a paradoxical effect of hardening the people. But Isaiah is to trust God's plan. Israel is going to be chopped down like a tree and left like a stump in a field. And that stump will itself be scorched and burned. But after all of that burning, God says that this smoldering stump is a holy seed that will survive into the future. It's a small sign of hope, but who or what is that holy seed? The rest of this section offers an answer. Isaiah confronts Ahaz, a descendant of David and a king of Jerusalem, and he announces his downfall. God says that it's the great empire of Assyria who will first chop Israel down and devastate the land, but there's hope. Because of God's promise to David, he's going to send after this destruction a new king named Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Emmanuel's kingdom is going to set God's people free from violent, oppressive empires. And Isaiah describes this coming king as a small shoot of new growth that will emerge from the old stump of David's family. It's this king that's the holy seed from chapter 6. And the king is going to be empowered by God's spirit to rule over a new Jerusalem and bring justice for the poor, and all nations will look to this messianic king for guidance. His kingdom will transform all creation, bringing peace. Now, you finish chapters 1 through 12 with a pretty good understanding of Isaiah's message of judgment and hope. But when will this all happen? Isaiah saw another empire arising after Assyria, and that's Babylon, who would also attack Jerusalem and actually succeed in destroying it. And that brings us into the next sections of the book.
So first, we have a large collection of poems that explore God's judgment and hope for the nations. We learn, first of all, of the fall of Babylon and Israel's neighbors. Isaiah could see that Assyria's world power would one day be replaced by the empire of Babylon, a nation even more destructive and arrogant. And Babylon's kings claimed that they were higher than all other gods, and so God vows to bring Babylon down. And not only Babylon. Isaiah goes on to list Israel's neighbors, accusing them all of the same kind of pride and injustice, and he predicts their ultimate ruin. But remember, for Isaiah, God's judgment is never the final word for Israel or the nations. And that leads into the next section with a series of poems that tell a tale of two cities. There's the lofty city that has exalted itself above God and become corrupt and unjust. This city is an archetype of rebellious humanity, and it's described with language that's all borrowed from Isaiah's earlier descriptions of Jerusalem and Assyria and Babylon all put together. This city is destined for ruin, and one day is going to be replaced by the New Jerusalem, where God reigns as king over a redeemed humanity from all nations, and there's no more death or suffering. These chapters are the climax to this section, and it shows how Isaiah's message pointed far beyond his own day. It was a message for all who are waiting for God to bring his justice on violent, oppressive kingdoms and bring his kingdom of justice and peace and healing love. The following section returns the focus to the rise and fall of Jerusalem. And first we find a whole bunch of poems where Isaiah accuses Jerusalem's leaders for turning to Egypt for military protection against Assyria. He knows this will backfire. And Isaiah says that only trust in their God and repentance can save Israel now. Which gets illustrated by the following story about the rise of Hezekiah, king of Jerusalem. Just as Isaiah predicted, the Assyrian armies come and try to attack the city. And so Hezekiah humbles himself before God and he prays for divine deliverance, and the city is miraculously saved overnight. But Hezekiah's rise is immediately followed by his fall. So he hosts a delegation from Babylon, and he tries to impress them by showing everything in Jerusalem's treasury and temple and palaces. It's clearly an effort to make another political alliance for protection. Isaiah hears about this, and he confronts Hezekiah for his foolishness. He predicts that this ally will one day betray him and return as an enemy to conquer Jerusalem. And we know from 2 Kings chapters 24 and 25 that Isaiah was right. Over a hundred years later, Babylon would turn on Jerusalem, come and destroy the city, its temple, and carry the Israelites away to exile in Babylon. And so all of Isaiah's warnings of divine judgment in chapters 1 to 39 lead up to this moment. He's shown to be a true prophet because it all came to pass like he said. But remember, the purpose of God's judgment was to purify Jerusalem and bring the holy seed and messianic kingdom over all nations. And it's that hope that gets explored in the next part of the book. But for now, that's what Isaiah chapters 1 to 39 are all about. So in this video, you see how God saved Jerusalem and how Prophet Isaiah's uh, prophetic message, was, which was foretold 100 years before, actually came into, uh, came alive 100 years when he was, when, when Babylon attacked the kingdom. So you see the prophetic messages of Prophet Isaiah and you see the relevance of Prophet Isaiah the importance of prophet Isaiah and why is he actually called a major prophet. He is called a major prophet simply because, um, I mean, of course, a lot of reasons, but uh, reasons that I, I want to highlight here for our class is he was faithful to God. He trusted God no matter what. He was bold enough to to speak the words of God, he was not frightened and he gave the message of God to the people that he needed to give out the message to. So you see Prophet Isaiah being a faithful servant of God, being a trusted servant of God and how he actually uh, grew in the eyes of God as a faithful person. We also notice the confidence level that Prophet Isaiah had in Yahweh, which uh, was an example for the others around him to believe also in Yahweh, to believe also in, uh, in God. If you see the confidence that Prophet Isaiah had 
was a, a was a evangelic uh, he evangelized it was like an evangelical confidence that he gave the people around him something that we are also called to do something that we are called to be we uh, are called to evangelize through our actions we are called to evangelize through the way we through the way we act through the way we speak through our confidence level and faithfulness to god so that's a fourth element which i would like to bring about bring to you is of a poor prophet isaiah his confidence which uh, gave others confidence about the about yahweh we are now move into the phase of the word of god but i would now want you to take your bibles along with you keep the bibles with you now i want you to close your eyes and calm yourselves down There's nothing on the screen except for a picture so do not you don't have to see it. We are in a situation of a pandemic. An uncertain, fear-filled situation. We are not certain of what the future is going to be like. we are not certain of how the next few months are going to turn out we are not aware of what would be the new normal that we are going to start living in are we going to go back to the schools in the same way or are we going to be having a new way of living a complete dilemma in our minds why we are in this complete dilemma i want you to now pay attention to the word of god taken from isaiah 37 verses 33 and 34 and hear the words of what the lord actually tells us it is of course based on the scriptures of the time when the capture of jerusalem would mean the end of judah and in this tense situation the lord's message comes through isaiah which we now listen to attentively a reading taken from the holy book of prophet isaiah chapter 37 verse 33 to 34 this is what the lord has said about the assyrian emperor he will not enter this city or shoot a single arrow against it no soldiers with shields will come near the city and no siege mounts will be built around it he will go back by the road on which he came without even entering this city i the lord have spoken the word of the lord thanks be to god what would the feelings in the hearts of the people in jerusalem be would that be a feeling of complete confidence in god or were they mixed feelings a feeling of fear distrust or a feeling of complete trust in yahweh the same words of the scripture come alive to us today in the situation that we are in we are also walled around a situation of uncertainty and fear what is our response to god at this time what are our feelings towards god is it a feeling of complete trust and surrender or is it a feeling of doubt fear lack of confidence in god or do we have the surety that god is taking care of our lives i want you to now open your eyes and i want to uh, show you a short clipping on an a trust exercise i want you to watch this trust exercise clipping 
and see yourself in that situation where that girl comes in and put yourself in that situation and think of what is your response to God when God comes and asks you the same question. So I want you to now see this video on a trust, a short video on trust exercise. Jesus, I just don't trust you. You don't trust me? No, I mean, I want to trust you, I just don't. <laughs> I have an exercise that I think will really help you. Oh, okay. Stand here and face this direction. Mm -hmm. Now, do you trust me? Uh, no, I just said I don't trust you. All right, well, this is all part of the exercise. Oh, all right. Great. Okay. Whenever I ask you if you trust me, you say, yes, Jesus, I trust you. Even though I don't. It's practice. Okay. So, do you trust me? <laughs> yes, Jesus. I trust you. Now, fall back. Are you going to catch me? Don't worry about that part. Okay, that's the part I'm worried about. <laughs> you can do this, okay? Just trust me. Trust you. Fall back. Okay, well, Jesus, I trust Good. you. <laughs> yes, I do trust you. I'm going to fall okay. back. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's great. Uh, okay. Let's try this again. Just face this direction and keep your feet planted, okay. all right? Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus, I trust you. Now, fall back. Okay, I'm going to do it. All right. I'm really going to do it. <laughs> okay. Good. Ah! Oh, Jesus, you really caught me! I didn't think you were going to get me, but you did! Oh, that was great! That was great! You're ready for level two! Level two, here yes. I come, baby! Woo! Whoa. Whoa. Okay, hold it. <laughs> oh, you know what? You're too close. You need to move back. <laughs> ah, right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> this one's a little bit different, Laura. Oh, okay. Uh, stand here. Uh huh. But face me. Oh, forward fall. Okay. I can do that. Wait. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Um, wait for my signal. Oh, right. The Jesus signal. <laughs> yes, the okay. Jesus signal. Do you trust me? Yes, Jesus. I trust you so much. Good. Fall back. <laughs> That's awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> Especially when you do it. <laughs> Seriously? Of course. Okay, Jesus, I don't know if you noticed this, but there is nobody over there. I know it looks that way to you. It looks that way. It is that way. You can do this, Laura. Just trust me and fall back. Jesus, I can't do that. We can do it together. I can't. You can. I won't. What have you seen? What is your response if you were asked the same question? I'm not here to actually, um, I, I cannot really get your response, but most of us would have not fallen just like that girl walked away. If we were given an invitation, most of us would not have fallen without having somebody in front of us. We wouldn't have been able to blindly trust God. We are all so similar in the situation that we are in. It is so relevant in today's times. Are we able to blindly put our trust in God? And that's where we hear the word from the scripture taken from the book of Isaiah. Where the Lord tells us that he is with us. Do not fear for he is with us. And he tells us in this beautiful song, which we hear over and over many a times, a beautiful hymn which we hear, but we always fail to forget these words every time we are in a crisis. We always fail to remember these words, this promise that God gave us through prophet Isaiah. We fail to remember it uh, in at so many situations that we are in. And we've got uh, Snehal, one of your uh, friends, who's going to play this song for us. Uh, she's going to sing and play the hymn for us. I will never forget you, my people. I want you to close your eyes and I want you to now listen to the words of this hymn and sing along with Snehal that she's going to sing and play this for us. I will never forget you, my people.
as we entrust our lives into your hands, we put our trust and faith in you. We ask you to bless us, bless our faith, and help us to grow in confidence as we journey through life, as we journey through the different elements of life that we go through. Some of us are struggling with our studies. Some of us are struggling financially. Some of us do not have proper facilities at home to study online. Many of us are not happy with the way life has actually progressed so far in the past three months. But Lord, we lift up the full thing to you and we ask you to bless us in our efforts to stay faithful, in our efforts to stay confident in you, in our efforts to stay worthy of being a faithful servant. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now that we have concluded with the word of God, I want to give you three major points of the life of Prophet Isaiah, which from which we can learn and live by today. The first learning is the trust that he had in God, the trust and confidence that he had in God. The second one is being faithful to God in spite of being questioned, in spite of the times of trouble. In spite of being in difficult situations, Isaiah still remained faithful to God. And the third point, though Isaiah was reluctant to take up the role as a prophet in the first, at the first go, he did it with hesitation, but he did it ultimately. And that's where we all are called to go to buy. We are called to, though we may be reluctant in the first go, but we need to answer God's uh, call to be a minister, to serve his people in different ways in the church, uh, to, to, to be a messenger of God in the small ways through our actions, uh, through the ways that we, that we treat other people. It could be uh, a, a small action of love, of action of uh, trusting somebody, action of being faithful to God, of, the, uh, of being evangelical in our actions to other people or uh, to, to our friends of other, uh, of other faith. And that's where Prophet Isaiah teaches us the three elements of trust, confidence, faithfulness and saying yes to God. No matter how incapable we feel, we ultimately become capable in God's hands. Now with this is an activity which I want you to do. If you are called to be a messenger, if you are a messenger, I'm not, called, I'm not saying you're called to be a messenger. If you are a prophet, if each of you are a prophet today, I think there are 100 odd uh, students in the 9th and 10th standards. If you are called to be a prophet... I want you to write out a message. I want you to write out a message uh, for two types of people. Okay. For people who have, uh, I'm going to give you two situations. For people who are struggling with their studies, struggling not in the sense of not being able to study because they don't have, because they're finding it difficult to understand but struggling because they do not have the proper resources at the moment, current situation, at the moment they do not, do not have the resources to study. They may not have proper internet facilities, they may not have a proper phone, they may not have a proper laptop or any of those things. They may not have a proper computer in the house to study. So what is your message of comfort to them? What is your message of comfort to them? God's message of comfort which, uh, which you, would, you would speak as a prophet to them. And the second situation is a situation where um, I want you to imagine a situation where your friends have, um, have not been faithful to God's word. 
okay they have been disobedient they have not trusted god and you as a prophet have to give them comforting words of helping them to put their trust back in god okay so i'm giving you two situations you can pick any any of the any of the two i'm not asking you to pick give a message for both any of the two first one is where you uh, where your friends do not have proper resources but you're going to still give them comforting words of trust and uh, uh trust and telling them to trust in god and pray to god so that they are able to you also so that you'll be blessed with the proper resources second message is for the ones who have been not faithful to god who have not been worthy of god's calling who have not been able to uh wait upon the lord in terms of being faithful so you're going to give them a message of how and why you should be faithful to god and what are the results of being faithful to god okay so two activities uh sorry two types of messages which you need to give now it's not a paper pen thing where you just think you write down your message i'd want you to uh possibly use messages cutouts like a whatsapp message cutout like an insta cutout like a facebook messenger cutout like a snapchat message if you have one if you can uh, get get a cutout of that um you know the ones that are coming on the screen now so kind of use those uh, cutouts and uh, use those kind of like, like a screenshot and uh, then send out a message um so that's something creative if you can manage to do would be great and then you can send it across to us as an image or maybe if you can draw it nicely and send it also would be fantastic great so um that's the activity which you need to complete for uh, until next sunday uh next thursday and you can send it across to perpetual miss okay so thank you so much for uh, paying attention to my class i enjoy taking this class for you all uh thank you once again for for everybody who uh, gave in your uh, videos for the recap thank you snehal for singing the hymn and also reading the word of god for us um continue to stay safe stay indoors and uh, stay lovely as ever bye bye see you all